Alright guys, welcome back to another video and today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. Today I'm going to share with you uh, a devotion that I had and I really thought it was powerful. So I said, hey, let me share it with um, YouTube. Alright guys, so make sure to drop a like, subscribe to this channel as bangers are incoming. So without further ado, let's get into it. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I've always found the account of Enoch very fascinating because imagine being so close to God that you actually walk with him. Now, of course, Enoch wasn't literally walking with God, but what that means is Enoch was in constant communication with God. Our first scripture is taken from, it goes like this, by faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he did what? That he pleased God. So before Enoch was translated, that means before God took him to heaven, his testimony pleased God. That means his life, his characteristics pleased God. So let's make that application. I want my life, I also want you, you guys' life to please God, amen? Now watch this. Another scripture, and Enoch lived 60 and five years and begat Methuselah. And Enoch walked with God after he begat Methuselah 300 years. Whoa, 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 let's stop right there. So here, Enoch walked with God for 300 years. I don't know guys if you are understanding this. Enoch walked with God, he was in constant communication in harmony with God for 300 years. That is incredible guys. Notice this, so he walked with God for 300 years, he begat sons and daughters, and all the days of Enoch were 360 and five years, and Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him, all right? So for 300 years, Enoch walked with God. So I'm sure you guys are at home possibly puzzled. Of course, I said uh, what walking with God means, but let's um, define this even more. Walking with God. You can leave it in the comment section below if you guys know. But walking with God, that means to be in constant communication with Him. Now, I'm going to read you guys a text. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. Thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. Thou shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou lie down, and when thou rise up. Now the context of this scripture is actually talking about God's word. So here we here we are told that when we wake up, God's word, that's the first thing we should be doing. That points to our personal devotion. So walking with God, that means to pray, have alone time with God, and as we go throughout the day, to be in constant prayer. Now that doesn't mean, guys, as you go throughout your day, you're kneeling and, and all that. No, but you can pray to God with your eyes open and you're talking to God like you would talk to a friend, all right? Now, another application of this walking with God, it is obedience to God because the Bible lets us know, um, can two walk together unless they, be, uh, unless they be agreed? So if we are doing wrong things, committing sin, we cannot truly have this experience that Enoch have had of walking with God. Now guys, here's a really, really powerful scripture. The Bible tells us in Galatians chapter 5 and verse 16, one of the most powerful scriptures as we're on the theme of walking with God. Galatians 5 16 tells us, this I say then, walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Let's read that again. Walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So when we are walking in the spirit, walking with God, we are not to fulfill the lust of the flesh. Now, what is the lust of the flesh? Of course, we have the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes and the pride of life. So young people, if we are to truly have this Enoch-like experience, we cannot be fulfilling the lust of the flesh. All right, guys. Now, I'm going to read you all a quotation. It says, Christ, our constant companion, Enoch walked with God, and when assailed by the tempter, he could talk with God about it. He had, he had no, it is written as we have, but he had a knowledge of his heavenly companion. He made God his counselor and was closely bound up with Jesus. And Enoch was honored in this course. He was translated to heaven without seeing death. And those who be translated at the close of time. So here she's making that applica application. So those that will be translated at the close of time will be those who commune with God 
on earth. So friends, if we are not communicating with God, if we are not making it our habit to have personal devotion, to be found in prayer, we are not going to be translated. We are not going to be saved and uh, we're not going to be saved. All right. Those who make manifest that their life is hid with Christ and God will ever be representing him in all their life practices. Selfishness will be cut out by the roots. Let's read that again. It needs to be emphasized. Those who would make manifest that their life is hid with Christ and God will ever be representing him in all their life practices. So young people, as we go throughout our lives, whether we are at school um, or anywhere that we go, we are to represent Christ. This is what it truly means to walk with God. All right, guys. So this was a quick um, bite-sized video. Make sure to drop a like, subscribe, and leave in the comments below your thoughts. All right, guys. More videos are coming very soon. And let us make it our prayer that we truly have this Enoch experience of walking with God. Until next time, I'm out. Peace.